Hello everyone, this is Felix from GM Wolf. Today we're going to be looking at the preprocessor in GameMaker Studio 2 and how we can take advantage of it. Let's have a look at an example script. We have a bunch of calculations, like 45 plus 5 or arg cos of 0.3, that could be done ahead of time. This is part of what the preprocessor is all about, optimizing these calculations at compile time, before your game is compiled into the final distribution. For example, 45 plus 5 will always be equal to 50, and R cos of 0.3 is always 1.266, so the preprocessor will remove these operations and replace them with the results. This allows the final code to be a little faster, as there are fewer operations being made. But these small differences can add up to a big performance gain. Let's have a look at another example. Here we use macros to define an x offset and width value. We use them as part of expressions and method parameters. Here again, the preprocessor is able to optimize away a lot of the operations. First, every macro call is replaced with its definition, so every occurrence of x offset is replaced with 50, and every occurrence of width is replaced with 100. Then, the preprocessor can pre compute our values just like before, as now the operations are being done on constants. In this next example, an if statement is used to switch between rendering circles using sprites or by using primitives. Such a use case is common when dealing with multiple versions of a game. For instance, the sprites could be used on desktop platforms, while the web platform could use primitives to reduce bandwidth. Switching between the two is done by changing the macro definition. This is again a good candidate for the preprocessor. When the condition evaluates to a compile time constant, it is able to optimize away the if statement as well. Because use sprites is always true, the preprocessor can remove the if statement, leaving only the branch where a sprite is drawn. Similarly, if we set use sprites to be false, the preprocessor will only keep the branch with the draw circle call. We can also use a new feature in GameMaker Studio 2 to define our macros differently based on different configurations, and more easily manage our feature set. Using macros and if statements in this way allows our code to be far more flexible without compromising on performance. Finally, let's have a look at how force inline can be used together with if statements in the preprocessor. Here we have a script used to log messages. We supply it with a message category, with lower numbers being more important than higher numbers, as well as a message to print out. If the message level is lower than the debug level, the message is printed out. Here is how it may be used. The first message is an important message, and so has a level of 0. The next is a warning, and so only has an importance level of 1. The last message is not very important, and may only be used when debugging the game, and so it has a priority of 2. Usually, these extra function calls and if statements would have an impact on the final game, even when the debug level is set to 0. That's because the level of the message would need to be checked against the current debug level during runtime, which can add up noticeably when used in tight loops. However, by using macros and force in line, we're able to completely optimize away unneeded messages. First of all, force in line will replace the function call with the function body. Now the debug level is checked against a constant rather than being checked against an argument. This allows a preprocessor to optimize the if statements. In all three of those cases, the conditions evaluate to true, and so only the show debug message calls are left. Let's have a look at what happens when we change the debug level. We set it to 0. Like before, the scripts are first inlined thanks to force inline. The first if statement evaluates to true, so the show debug message is kept. However, the second does not evaluate to true, and so the entire if statement, including the body, is removed. The same happens with the third message. Now the only code left is the one needed to print out the important message, and no debug level checks are required. These sorts of optimizations allow you to use many utility functions without needing to worry about the performances they may introduce, though you must ensure that the values used can be evaluated at compile time. In other words, no variables are used. So as you can see, the preprocessor will optimize your code in a number of ways, and although it will probably not mean the difference between running at 30 FPS versus 60 FPS, it does give you the tools to build more flexible code and keep different configurations all under the same code base, whilst also keeping your code running nice and fast. I hope you have found this video useful, if so please give it a like and you can subscribe to make sure you don't miss any of my tutorials, and I'll see you guys next time.